Good day, Traders Edge with High Tech Trading Analysis. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about the updates I've made to my chart risk reward tool. Now, um, I just released this about a year ago. If you haven't watched the previous presentation, please go back and watch it before you watch this. But if you're familiar with the tool uh, and or you own it, hey, I'm going to try to explain some of the updates that we that I've done. Come back to our drop down. Originally, we pick a type um, when we place our grid on the right hand side over there. How do we want to reset our grid? And we have types. I have a bar type. You know, you, if you set it today, it'll go back and it'll be reset and stay at the previous day's close. So you can see how much that we've varied. From the previous close or week or now I'm not going to go through a lot of this please watch that other video I will look, look at fixed real quick I have adjusted the size and the aesthetics of uh, the order placements on those um, that's that's the only thing that's changed between that and now we have added a new dynamic got a lot of requests when this first came out that they wanted the grid to reset on every price change so now I allow that as well now with this you'll see that we've got a little shaded area on our grid over here with this set to dynamic if we go back into the indicator properties and we take a look at the third group down risk reward okay we actually set up the amount of dollars that we're willing to risk and the amount of dollars that we want for a reward and that will be highlighted or shaded on the grid over here to the right a couple more options here we can display RR lines or shade RR area what does that mean let's try to display the lines we click apply and now the shaded area that we have here we have a line that extends out to the first bar on the chart shaded area if we left click on that it will actually bring up another property as well and we'll tell it a width by default if we leave it to to zero it will be the same as the line and extend out to the first bar on the chart let's go ahead and apply that and we can see that we've just now shaded that particular area now if I want to reverse the grid I just right click on the the icon up here again like um, that was demonstrated original in the original video but uh, let's turn that off and if we look at the drop down we can see that we have those both of those options available show the lines or show the areas are available just quick and easy through the drop down as well the next thing that we've added to this is the ability to use chart trader quantity for our grid sizing so if we go back into the indicator properties and we look at our second grouping here sizing originally we decide we manually put what we want the sizing of the grid to be meaning from a future size by default we're looking at what is one tick worth for one contract now we could make that two contracts we could manually put whatever we want in that particular field there if I make that if we make that two, notice one two three four five that looks like each of these is a point four ticks for this particular instrument if I were to apply this then each of these would be determinant on the number of contracts that we put here does that hope that makes sense there so now we can use chart trader quantity if we select that our manually sizing goes away because we're going to use whatever is selected over here we click apply 
we're using one. If we change this, we use two, or we're using whatever is selected for a quantity. Now, again, if we use our pull down, both this and position quantity can be selected in our pull down. So if I don't have that on and we change this, that's not going to change. It's all dependent on how you want to look at it. I don't particularly use that, um, but I had several requests to make that happen. Uh, the same thing, they're both independent. Okay, we use chart trader quantity. If you've got that selected, it's going to use that. If you've got is pos use position quantity, if it's in a position, that's going to override whatever's on the chart trader. Okay, or if you don't have that on and that on, whatever size of the position you have on currently at that time is going to be dependent on what the grid sizing is. Okay, sorry about that. I got detained a bit this morning. Let's continue where we left off. We'll look at the drop down. Let's um let's turn chart trader off. Let's turn show order markers on, position markers on, and let's show the RR TR box, risk reward TR top right. That's all that means, top right box. So I've placed a little box up here at the top that says reward, risk, and then it's going to give us a, a risk reward ratio. From originally, it's always been like this. If we put an order on our chart, our grid is automatically, no matter what type we're using or what style we're using, the grid is automatically going to reset and set itself to that order so that we can see the risk reward around that. Okay, always been like that. Recently, what I've added, as you can see, there's a number one right here. So that's saying that's my first order. Not necessarily the quantity that's associated to it, that's just my first order, right? There is a stop. I place a marker next to that stop telling us what type of risk is associated to these to this order order number one order number one if i place another order you can see that's order number two if i place another stop we can see this is order number two and this is the risk associated to that particular order okay now these are open orders not when we're in a, a position if we've executed and we're in a position, it will work slightly different. Okay, right now we just move our move move our stops and targets around, and and we can um, let's come down here and do this. I'm just arbitrarily dragging these somewhere so that I can come down here and realistically put some targets, and up here see what type of risk reward I have associated to that overall trade. Now, if I go and put another stop order up here, there's nothing to associate that stop. There, there's no entry order associated to apply that to. So you're not going to see any kind of marker or next to that you'll know that that's not associated to anything that you currently have going on now if we get rid of this one we've got rid of our stop for our second the chart risk reward is not going to recognize that the order that was existing on the chart already was associated to that now if you, you just move that, it will associate itself with it. This is going to be one of the main differences between open orders like this and executions and positions I'll discuss here in a second to where they will automatically pick themselves up. I might change that here in the orders in the future. But right now it's as simple as, right, all, all we've really done is add markers. It's always reset. It's always been associated to the style 
we have set up here. If we set this up to read currency, this will start to read currency. Let's put a stop there. Let's put a target. Let's put a couple stops. Let's put a couple targets. And if you want to look at that in a dollar format, we just change it to dollars. If we want to look at that in points, ticks, I've come to grown accustomed to points myself. So let's get rid of all of this. Let's, uh, we, well, we've got control of this. We're in a simulator. So let's put an order here. Let's put an order here. Let's put an order, a stop order here. And then let's put another stop order here. And we're say we'll come down and target the bottom of this and the break of this back to test the lows down here. What is that? That's only 1.5. That's only, I'm, I'm risking well, right now, if I don't get in this second contract, I've got a one-to-one -one on this. My stop's 3.5. My target's 3.75. Not a great looking trade, really. Now, the difference between orders and executions. Notice how there's not, I don't place another entry order next to this as if it was going to be the second entry. Until this order is executed, there, this, is, this is not marked, nor will the stop order associated to it, will it be. The minute we get in that order, now that stop order and that target order become active. But if we were to have more on there, they would there would not be a marker next to them. Automatically on on the fly kind of tells you what you what you're limiting your risk to be. I try to stack when when orders get stacked like this. It, we stack our markers. So this is our first order stop. This is our second order stop. Now there is an issue with this in particular in, in that um, Ninja isn't real consistent on when it stacks and when it doesn't stack its orders. Okay, and then well, I say that is if I do this and I do this and then we bring them together to the same level, they'll, they'll stack themselves right next to each other, right? But if I cancel one of them, come back to either one of them and or start this from scratch and place another one right over the top of it, oh, well, it, it, this is where the inconsistently lies. Sometimes they stack, sometimes they don't. My markers are always going to stack just in case. Let's go back into the indicator properties real quick. Okay, we've covered that. Chart traders, lines, displays, marker offsets. Okay, just remember these are both different. Um, these offsets should come default right out of the box for 1080p. If you're using 4K, you are probably going to have to use your marker offsets. Uh, this adjust the box up here at the top. This is how far you want it to the left. And this is how far you want it down. Okay. Your grid width is always grid offset. I believe that might be new too. Um, if you have something in the far right of your chart that you need the grid to be left of, I do allow that option. I think we covered the grid lines and that's about it. I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. I hope this was beneficial. Thanks for your time. As always, be safe and take care. Now, the first thing, if you already own this, if you're already using this, the first thing I need you to do is that after you update this, we need to go back and check our templates and make sure that if you have a default template defined, that we resave it. And the reason why I say that is if we look at our pull down icon, we can see that there's been a lot of 
enhancements made to the drop down which means there's been several properties added to the indicator that would not be in your current templates so to do this we're going to uh, I, what I would suggest you do open up a blank workspace open up a new chart apply the chart risk reward to the chart and we're, once we do that we'll be in the indicators property chart rr will be down here in your bottom left now we want to come over to the right select it here's all the properties come over to the right templates and then we'll click load this is just going to bring up a, a window and show us what templates are available currently we're looking for something that says default just default not with any other letters numbers anything behind it like all of these something that says just default if you have one that says just default what we need to do is come back to our properties configure all of this the way that you want to see it templates save save it right over the default and that way all the properties that are available here in the UI will now be saved into the new template and you will use that each and every time.